How's the family this morning? You're going to have to excuse me. Uh, <clears throat> my voice is a little rough. I got an allergy thing going on. Yes, I've been to the doctor. That doesn't really help a whole lot with allergies. But uh, I'm going to do the best I can if you'll be patient with me. So let's go to the Lord in prayer this morning. Father God, we come to you this morning. We lift this day to you, Father. Thankful all the blessings and favor you pour out on us here at your church house. Father, we just uh, thank you for this opportunity to be here this morning. We pray you'd come in and sit among us, that your presence just be felt throughout this building, Father. And that you just move me over out of the way, hide me behind the cross, and let the words that come from me be straight from you, Father. We love you, we praise you, give the glory to you. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Well, once again, let's thank the band. Thank you, Vicki, for taking care of things while Nick's out. Well, this weekend, you know, we're getting closer and closer to March, and for a fisherman, this is the time of year that fishermen get really, really excited because them big old fat bass are going to move up in shallow water, and they get pretty easy to catch. So, we're, you know, this is an exciting time for nearly all fishermen that like to bass fish. And this weekend, Terry and I were able to uh, get out on the lake and fish together, and, uh, you know, I fish a lot, many of you know, but... Terry, she just goes out and fishes with me every once in a while. Usually when, I'll do. <laughs> Usually when the weather is good, she'll go out and the fish are biting. And if the weather's good and the fish aren't biting, she'll just go out and lay on the back of the boat and read a book, which I'm okay with that too. You know, it's just the company. Time. Let me give her. No, I don't need that. <laughs> you better not bring me that. <laughs> this is how you become his favorite. <laughs> Thank you, guys. But I'll share this with you. She's a pretty good fisherman or fisherwoman when she does decide to go out. She's, she's pretty good at it. So yesterday, after being on the lake for just a short period of time, I caught the first fish. And it was small. It was a small one, but it was the first fish. I'm not sure why that even matters to me, but it does, right? It doesn't matter if Terry's in the boat or who's in the boat. That matters to me, right? Any of y'all guys can relate to something like that. So, And the fishing was a little slow because of the weather and stuff. And I stopped in this one area to tie on a couple of different lures that might work a little bit better. And, of course, she just keeps fishing. And she hangs a pretty good fish. She does. She catches one that's about three and a half pounds, a little fat thing. And it was they're so powerful in this little lake. And it was all over the place. And she's screaming and yelling. So... You know, kind of like last year I caught a 9-9 nine nine with Danny. We sound like little girls out there screaming and hollering. I mean, we were so excited. So that's what Terry sound like. And, and after I, uh, you know, uh, took a couple of pictures, I'll go back to tying the lures on, and she hangs another fish. And this time it's a really nice fish. It's a big fish. And you you know, we see enough of them. It's probably five or six pounds. It jumped. It came up out of the water, and then it spit the lure out. I felt bad. <laughs> no, you got to understand, as I watched her fight the fish and how big it was, I just got excited for her. I really did. But since it didn't stay hooked up and threw the lure right at the boat, that happens. That happens to me, too. And I was disappointed that she lost the fish because, you know, uh, we want to weigh them. But at the same time, this meant that I was behind on catching fish, right? But I was excited for her. You see, even though she lost the fish, I was already thinking right after that about what I needed to do to catch one bigger, <laughs> which I did. I landed mine. I caught one little old five pounds, and she net, she netted it for me. That made it part hers, right? No. <laughs> but you know, Terry was excited for me. But she reminded me that everything was not a competition. Can you believe this lady <laughs> right here said everything's not about a competition when that's all it's about when she gets ready to do anything, Right? I took her words wisely, but very lightly. <laughs> I 
I found myself really not being a very humble person, but a little cocky and mouthy. This is where she said, do you ever listen to your own sermon? They're in my head. I hear them and I say them, but I don't probably always apply them in the right way. And I know she's right. I know she's right. But this is fishing, right, guys? I mean, there's a difference. And as we continued to fish, as we went back to the launch area, back to the dock, I found myself competing with myself to stay humble. I mean, it's some of the things she says that reminds me that it's not all about me, that she is in the boat with me. But sometimes you just lose yourself in those minutes, right, in those moments that things are going on. And I really got to where I was focused on that. Let's not be, let's make sure we stay humble and don't let it go to our head. What is it about our nature that are, there are times when staying humble takes a really tough effort? What is it about nature in us? Well, in the New American Standard Bible, humility occurs ten times. Four in the Old Testament often mean the quality or state of not thinking you are better than other people. But the six times it occurs in the New Testament means either lowliness of mind or meek. So it has two separate meanings there. Alternatives for the word humble appear as humbles are humbled, which occurs 89 times in 82 verses. So being humble is important to the Lord. And these words often mean a proud and disobedient person is brought into subjection or submission to another's will. I don't think I do that, do I? No, you're not going to answer that. Okay, very good. If that sounds terrible, doesn't it? And sometimes humility is forced, while other times it happens willingly, right? Sometimes when the partner in your boat gets a little mouthy, then you start getting a little forceful with your, um, never mind, we won't go there. Okay, we'll just stop there. Let's turn to the book of Romans, chapter 3, verse 27. It's nothing new in my life. Romans chapter 3, beginning at verse 27. You know, the whole book of Romans, we find Paul, through the whole book of Romans, he's defending the gospel. And Andrew Womack says that Romans is Paul's masterpiece of grace. Romans 3, verse 27. Where then is boasting? It is excluded because of what law? The law that requires works? No, because of the law that requires faith. See, if we understand the grace of God, it makes it literally almost impossible to be boastful and arrogant. It kind of takes it away from us if we understand what grace is all about. You know, I had to show grace when she lost her fish, and I did. I didn't rub it in. The same thing happens when we how things that happen to other people and we can't humble ourselves and, and show grace that those situations happen, things happen. Instead of me being that way all the time or us being where we show grace when things happen to others, sometimes we get very boastful because it's not happening to us. And then what does God do? He allows it to happen to us, right? And us understanding that God gives us everything and nothing happens without him. So to really be prideful about anything is, is bad for us because God gave it to us in the first place, right? He gave us the gifts. He gave us the talent, the knowledge, and the ability. But then we start making it all about us, and it's very easy to do. One of the problems with humility is that many people see being humble as weak or putting themselves down. Rather, I'm not going to humble myself. That makes me look weak. Well, then why would God show grace on us? Why would God show grace on us? Because he wants us to show grace on others. And to consider ourselves weak or putting ourselves down because of being humble, that's contrary to the grace of God. 
because God chose grace knowing that we have shortcomings and sins in our lives, right? So even though we have these things going on in our life, God continues to show that. So he doesn't say, hey, just because you got these sins and shortcomings in your life, don't go putting yourself down. Don't go criticizing yourself. Don't, don't go there because I offer grace for that. I offer, you can repent from that. And he, he shows grace in everything. So why would we consider ourselves sometimes when we have these little problems going on in our lives, why would we consider ourselves meek or that we're not really worthy? Let's turn our Bibles to Numbers uh, chapter 12, verse 1. This will kind of clear some of that up for us. Rather, is it okay, is it okay not to be humble all the time? I guess that's what I'm saying. Do you have to be humble in everything? And we're going to look at it right here with, with, uh, in, in Numbers. Numbers chapter 12, verse 1. Numbers chapter 12, begin at verse 1. Marion and Aaron began to talk against Moses because his <clears throat> Cushite wife, for he had married a Cushite. Has the Lord spoken only through Moses, they asked? Has he also spoken through us? And the Lord heard this. Now, right here, we're going to stop right here for just a minute so you understand what's going on. Uh, <clears throat> Miriam and Aaron were speaking out against Moses because he married a Cushite wife. And they're looking at that, it, that she was not, he was a Jew, she was an Ethiopian. And they're looking at that as an interracial marriage. So they're, they're kind of poking at him there a little bit. But if we jump down to, to uh, verse 3, look at verse 3. It says, now Moses was a very humble man, more humble than anyone else on the face of the earth. Think about that. At that time, Moses was more humble than anybody else on the face of the earth. And I don't know how many people were on the earth at that time. Uh, I'm not sure how many. I know Moses led, what, over three million Jews out of Egypt. So there's three million and they were the minority in Egypt at that time. So there were many other people there, possibly 10 million people there. And not counting people in other places. So if there's, let's just say there's 20 million people on earth at that time. And Moses was the meekest man on earth. That's a huge statement. Think about that. But what makes this statement even better? Is that Moses is the one that wrote it? What? Wait a minute. If Moses was the meekest and most humble man on earth, why would he write something like that? Man, that is shocking. And you start to think, well, now we may have to change our definition of humility. Because if that Moses can say that, there are many people who say, I'd never say anything like that, right? I wouldn't say that about myself. How can a person that was meek and humble say that they are the most humble and meekest person on earth? How can they do that? Well, I guess we need to redefine the way we look at meekness. Amen? I heard a story about a church that took a vote on who was the humblest in the church. The humblest person in the church. And they all agreed it was Brother Tom. And they gave him a big red button to wear all that day that said he was the humblest person in their church. They called him to the front, gave him the button, but when he accepted it, they took it back away because he wasn't very humble. Makes no sense. You see, if you're truly humble, you might not, never know it. You might not even know that you're really that humble. Many times people accomplish great things for the Lord, and when someone offers them honor for doing it, the first thing they say it's not about me, it's about the Lord. It's not me, it's the Lord. That's the first thing you're going to say when somebody offers them honor. When Jesus was riding the donkey into Jerusalem, and the people were laying palm leaves on the ground and yelling, Hosanna, Hosanna. The donkey didn't jump up and say, hey, it's not about me, right? He didn't say that. They weren't honoring and praising the donkey. They were honoring and praising the person on the donkey. Amen? So there's a difference there. The difference is when 
we're being used by the Lord. And we should recognize it. It's okay. It's not pride. You know, when somebody says, hey, you know, something you said in a message or a prayer that you said changed my life. You don't say, I have to say, oh, that's all about the Lord. No, how about saying thank you? Because you're saying thank you to them and you're saying thank you, Lord, for giving me the gift to be able to do that. That's not prideful. We may never consider that the reason people are honoring us is because they see God in us. Have you ever thought about it that way? I mean, it's great. I, lo I love that, that, that people are humble and they, they, they want to give all the praise to the Lord. But the Lord, he wants people to know that he's using them. And if they don't receive honor for what they do, then it's kind of like they're leaving the Lord out. They're giving it all to him, but they're denying that he's even part of them. And I think we have to focus on that more when we say, hey, we don't need that, that praise or that honor. We need to humble ourselves. Yes, we do. But if they can see God in us. This gentleman was talking about an evangelist that went to another country. And he, so many people came to Christ because of him. And, and he, was, he was there. He kind of stood out in the group, you know, after, after it was over with. And he had reached so many people. And people were coming up and honoring him and praising him and wanting to touch him and talk to him, the whole thing. And he just kept saying, no, it's not about me. It's about the Lord. It's not about me. It's not about the Lord. When one pastor there with him said, no, they see God in you. That's why they want to touch you. That's why they want to talk to you. He said, yes, the Lord offered it, but you're the one that brought it. Right? So we can't always be so humble that we can't accept honor and praise for things. There are people that believe that it's wrong to show honor to a person who gives a testimony, plays and sings music, preaches or serves others. They really believe that. I mean, I've heard bands say that. We've got a great band here. We give them praise. I've heard bands say, hey, don't clap. It's not about us. Sure it is. What do you mean it's not about you? God gave you that gift and that talent to bring that music. So yes, it is about you, but you honor God showing the praise that he's given you. So we kind of got to not get on our holy bandwagon and start picking things apart that way. Once again, the honor is not because God is not acknowledged, but that God has given this person the opportunity to reveal Jesus Christ through what they do, through the gifts and talents God gave. In 1 Samuel 2, God says, those who honor me, I will honor. So is it a godly thing to honor people? Well, it is a godly thing to honor people. And it's not pride and arrogance for us to recognize that God has touched our lives and blessed us in things that he's given us to do. The gifts he's allowed us. We don't need to be ashamed of those. God's got control of it all. God gives it to us. God can take it away. That's humility. That's what humility is about. Can we even imagine how much humility, how much humility it took for Moses to write, I am the meekest and most humble man on the face of the earth. Can we even imagine what that took for him to write that? But he knew where he stood in the grace of God. And he knew where his gifts and talents came from. And he knew why God was using him. And if you're that kind of person that thinks, I never say that, then you're not truly meek, right? You're not truly humble. Would you say you would never say that? True humility is not going above what God says about you and not going below what God says about you because people believe both ways. It's not having an opinion about yourself which some do. It is just getting to a place, getting to that right place where God and his opinion about you is more important than what you think about yourself. If you can get there, you've gotten past a lot. And you don't worry about what other people think. Oh my gosh, Facebook's full of that, right? And so are people. Oh, what are they going to think? I don't care. If I believe that God cares about me, 
if I believe I'm doing the right thing for God, then why do I care what anybody else thinks? And if you know me, as I know many of you, I would be the one to say when someone says something wrong about you or they say something wrong about me, that we would say to them, that's not the person I know. Maybe you got that wrong, right? Because if we worry about what people think about us, we won't ever leave the house, right? Because it's tough. And people have opinions. Everybody's got one. Whether they're any value or not, that's the thing. If you're concerned about what people think about the gifts you're using that God has given you, and you think that showing off those gifts or showing those gifts are arrogant, then you're dead to yourself. I'm sorry, you're not dead to yourself. I said that wrong, didn't I? Because the Bible calls us to be dead to ourselves, not about the world, right? Not about others. So are we truly focused on the right things whenever we do use those gifts? Yeah, we can use them for bad things too. We can be arrogant, boastful. There's so many times that people take those gifts and they have really good talents and they have really good abilities to do things and they take them and they start doing really good things with them and people start to recognize them. Then they make it all about themselves and then Satan steps in, starts working on the mind and then they think they got all this going on and what follows that is a fall, right? Because that what, that's what comes after pride. Because that's what that is. That's pride. Then they're looking for a fall. And somehow that's going to happen. And I'm going to tell you, and many of you know, pastors aren't exempt from that at all. We've seen many pastors fall that got away from God and thought it was all about them. Forgot who brought them to the dance, right? And I always say that. Let's not forget who brought us to the dance. Because when we do, then we're falling away from the Lord. Baptist pastor F.B. Meyer from England in the 18, 19, early 19th century said, I used to think that God's gifts were on shelves, one above another, and that the taller we grow in our Christian character, the more easily we should reach them. I find now that God's gifts are on the shelves, one beneath the other. And it is not a question of growing taller, but of stooping lower that we have to go down to get his best gifts for us. Amen. That's the way we humble ourselves and then take those gifts and run with them. Humility is sometimes thought to be putting yourself down, as we just talked about, in conversation and refusing to receive compliments or encouragement. That, that's humility. That's great. But if God gave you some a gift and a talent, then use it and be proud of it. And be proud to let people know God gave me that gift. You know, you don't, once again, you don't have to scream and shout, hey, it's God, it's not me. No, it's you because God's in you. And God's using you to do the things to accomplish his will, right, and his purpose. It was said of one great man whose characteristic was humility. It was not that he pretended he was very bad, but he had forgotten he was very good. Sometimes we forget the good things we do. We get so humble that we forget that we're doing good things for others. Sometimes we can be ashamed of it. There are people that are given honor for things they do, and they're, they're, they're ashamed of it. They don't want other people to know, and that's okay. That's okay. But if God's using you, and he's going to use us in that way, let's honor him by accepting that honor for him instead of refusing it. And humility is not self-criticism. It's not material sacrifice. You go, wait. Now, these people that have all this materialistic stuff, many of them aren't very humble, and that's true. There are a lot of people that have a lot of materialistic stuff, and they're not very humble. But there's a lot that are. They're very humble. But that doesn't mean you got to get rid of that material stuff also. It is a personality disposition. Humility is a spiritual quality that is not found in that is to be found in the heart of every Christian. If you confess to be a Christian, you're going to have humble things about you. Just because you show meekness, just because you show you're humble, that doesn't make you weak. It actually makes you strong. 
and to reveal Jesus Christ to everyone you come in touch with, no matter what's going on. That's the strongest you'll ever look. You see, God has given me the talent and the ability to be a, a pretty good fisherman. I shouldn't have opened that door. But I am to use it to benefit others, not to prove myself. Right? There's a fine line there. It's what we do with the gifts and the talents. Rather, if I want to be competitive in using the gifts that God has given me, then I need to make sure I am first competing to stay humble while sharing those gifts. That's the way we need to look at it. Don't run away from those gifts and don't be ashamed of them. Use them in the best ways you can. And the difference between being humble and arrogant is sharing your gifts and knowledge with others while reflecting Jesus Christ rather than using them to overshadow somebody. All right? Sorry, dear. <laughs> She's going to keep this sermon, put it on the mirror in the bathroom, I know. I know a lot of humble people, and I know a lot of prideful people. But I think where the balance comes in is your walk with Jesus Christ. It's where if you're connected and you're walking daily with Christ, he'll remind you very quickly when you're getting there a little out of line. He'll bring you back into line where you need to be. He'll wipe that pride out. But you should never get that far out. You should never get that prideful, that boastful out there where it is a deterrent for people being drawn to you. And then that means you're not reflecting Jesus Christ to others. Our whole goal in life for Jesus Christ is to share the message and the good news. And the only way we can do that is reflecting Jesus Christ through us with our actions and our words and what we do and what we say. So I pray today that we all recognize that when we stay humble with our actions and our words, it's not wrong to receive honor. Don't, don't believe that. Because it's also honoring God who provided the gifts. And it's being an honor to him when you use them to help in his purpose and his will. God wants to use each and every one of us. There's no one sitting here today that can't be used by God. There's some sitting here today that are refusing to be used by God, right? I don't know who you are. You know who you are. But God's tapping on your shoulder. He's saying, hey, start using those gifts and talents I've given you to honor me and let me honor you. Amen? Let's pray. Father God, once again, we come to you this morning just thankful for the opportunity just to be here. Father, we are extremely thankful for the gifts and favor that you show on us, but Father, we're thankful that you've given us talents and gifts that will help benefit others around us. Father, that it will help bring others to know you, your will, and your way for their lives. And Father, I pray that we reflect all that in what you're doing in our lives by and allowing us to be honored with those gifts. So Father, I pray today that we would focus on not just staying humble, but Father, revealing you in our humbleness and in our actions and words that we put forth each and every day. Father, that you would just abide in us and we abide in you. Father, that we are connected to you, that we're committed to you. And Father, that we stay focused on you. It will keep us from being boastful and arrogant. Father, we love you and we praise you. I pray today that everything we said, did, was uplifting, glorifying, and pleasing to you. And we ask this in Jesus' holy and precious name. Amen.